Hello, everyone. Welcome to the MTG Paper Legacy uh, quarterfinals here for our June League. Uh, Chaotic Bear joined here, Mr. Jack Dex and Damique or Michael on the left and Malfi on the right. It's a lot to get out here because players are already going. How's it yeah. going, Mr. Jack Dex? Going good. We know it's been a good day. Hopefully, we're going to see some good legacy action here. We got Maverick on the left and we got Jeskai Stoneblade, which is one of my favorite decks. I played Jeskai Stoneblade for about a good two years, so a lot of fun there. Yeah, a lot of. Uh... Uh, competing um, Stoneforge Mystics here. That was the uh, word I was trying to get out. Oh, yeah. Uh, ton of and... You're going to see an island on the play from Malfi. Malfi has altered islands and mountains, um, which can be somewhat confusing, but I promise you there are islands and mountains. And we did speak to uh, Malfi, so Malfi will change these out on the next video recording, I believe. Yeah, the, that's uh, actually very helpful to me because I looked at that and thought it was like the back of an art sleeve at first. Oh, an island. It's a full altered... Uh, Malfi is very They're proud beautiful. of them. Very proud of yeah. them. But like, I can't tell the difference when, when, you see, when you see the mountain and you see the island. Trust me. You'll know. You'll know exactly what I mean when you see them. But, um, yeah. He's posted a, a bunch of those before and they're all very pretty. They're very, very pretty. Um, we had a fetch with uh, Secret Lair Art, uh, Verdant Catacomb, I believe. Um, yep. Going straight into a Forest, Birds of Paradise, and a Thalia. Uh, nice signed 7th edition, I believe, Birds of Paradise. I think that might be 8th or ninth, based on the symbol, but I'm not entirely sure here. Um, that's a really neat forest. It's one of the standard showdown ones, I think. Uh, I think it's Rebecca Gay. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, you, you are a big sucker for Rebecca Gay, aren't you, right? Uh, I'm a big sucker for that and for land, so yeah, yeah. very much uh, into that uh, that forest. I'm excited to see. I think she has a secret lair coming out, right? Um, I she has or they've announced secret. it. Yeah, she has yeah. her own secret lair coming out where she gets to pick the cards, which isn't the Mother's oh. Day one, I'm pretty sure. So no, that's excited. like four different artists, but she is she does have one of them. Yeah, she has um, one. I'm excited to see what she picks. Yeah. Uh, so in the game here, it looks like Melfi has just played two lands go. Uh, Michael on the left has gotten to develop his board a little bit. Um, oh, yeah. oh, no stone forge mystic and just going to pass with three with three lands. Huh. What do you I, think? Uh, what do you think he's holding up there? Or do you think it's just out of? Out of uh, cheap threats to play. So. Uh, probably out of cheap threats to play. I imagine this was a prismatic um, ending, uh, if I remember correctly. I think we're at end of turn, so it's swords? He ticked up his life total, but I haven't actually seen the spell it yet. could be, yeah, it's probably swords. Probably right. swords. I imagine so. We haven't seen the swords yet, but there it is. Uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. The 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 left the left art is the planes, just so you know. <laughs> uh yes, that's okay. the planes. Uh and I think the far left is the mountain. I can't be right. I, I I don't remember. Could be the mountain. I don't remember. Yeah. So we will get a stone forge for Gita here. Yes. Gita gonna be a great pick against uh against Maverick. Mow down all those X ones. Oh yeah. Gita is always great. Especially in this kind of matchup. Yeah. Bird, so it, cut off the mana source. Yeah. Uh, you know, this, it'll, I guess we'll have to see how this plays out, but this strikes me as similar to like that kind of Delver thing where you, players, if you were in a mirror, expend all the resources to kill the other person's stuff and then just were like top deck for a while. Yeah. This kind of matchup can also end up like that where it's just like you answer each other's threats over and over and then you just like top deck for a while. Mm -hmm. Oh, one of the cards in hand may have been this backup failure. From uh, from Dominique. Yeah, notice that we have the island by itself, the plains by itself, and I believe it is the mountain by itself. That that's how we're differentiating this. We're swords and Thalia again. Never didn't have it. All right, Melfi, yeah, backup swords there. Uh, that takes him off of deploying the GT this turn. What in heck is that card? Is that an altered ponder? Could be. It looks like an altered ponder. Was there a secret lair ponder that looks like that? I don't think so. I think it's an altered ponder. Okay. Like stained glass. That's so cool. Uh, it would be really beautiful in person, I bet, but on camera, I can't, can't even tell what it is. Uh, so, just to swing in there with the stone forge, since he doesn't have the mana to activate it. That's it finds the land for turn. Oh, yeah. Plan the Bayou. As we are at MTGPL, if you are new to watching us, 
We do allow proxies, so that Bayou could be real or it could be a proxy Bayou. We don't know. Um, you join and play our events. We have a Saturday weekly challenge. We have a bi-weekly Sunday geared towards um, Euro and APAC region time zones. On every other Sunday, we have a challenge for that. All over webcam. Winner gets a token um, that we make for the season. Current season token is a crop rotation token. So it's a proxy for our events. It's really cool and made by an in-house artist. Of course, this is the league um, top eight, and every month we do a league. Right now, it's open for July up until the first Tuesday. Um, and then, of course, our invitational, which is every quarter. The next invitational is August. So if you play enough events, um, get qualification points for every win that you get. Um, it's a lot of fun. And then we have Legacy Live every other Tuesday, uh, which is kind of like a versus series. Uh, we're going to be green sunning here, just to cut in for um, our spiel. We're green sunning and getting forced for it. Yeah, it looks like X equals five. I'm not entirely sure. That's a that's a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be what? Um, questing Beast? I think Questing Beast only costs four. Oh, he has one uh, Titania Protector of Arc. Oh, Titania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's sick. I'm sad we get to see that. Happens. Um, so Melfi is going to get to start ticking up on this. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, that connection was exactly what he needed, and it's... Uh, if he had been able to get the Titania, he would have been able to at least uh, get a big enough creature to block it and kill the Stone Forge. Still get the counters on Jitae, but now Malfi just has everything. Um, yeah, this being four color Maverick, though, I imagine there are um, oh, there's just four swords. There are no abrupt decays in the deck. Um, looks like two abrupt decays on the sideboard. Um, so just the one Night of Autumn, I think, to get rid of the. Um, we have a Quaselli. Oh, one of Cloud Pride Mage, yeah. I'm glad to see someone else playing that card. I don't feel like that gets enough play. All the triggers are nice. We're going for Green Sun for three. Yeah. Um, um, could be a bunch of different things. Um, I, I still end up playing it every I Night of Autumn. I assume this um, is Night of Autumn. Yeah, with the option to get both, yeah. Night of Autumn makes total sense. Um, I like... I like Pride Mage uh, myself just because it's cheaper to commit, but it's the same amount of mana total. It just has, seems to have a little more value. Um, um, you have to sacrifice it, though. That's another. A Knight of Autumn was always going to get hit, anyways. That is true. Yeah, that's being able to keep it out is is yeah. nice. That is fair. Um, sometimes it's just nice to run out the two drop on turn one or turn two, and then the press of the new Strixhaven card. Hey, great card. Yep, Malfi's going to take a look at three here. Uh, can one. Exile one to play this turn? Put one in his hand, one on the bottom. Yes. So, uh, sort of like divination with a little selection and a little urgency. Yeah, just a little. One goes to hand, one goes to the exile zone. Uh, usually you're going to put something that you can actually cast in the exile zone or something that you don't care about. Yeah, and uh, double check me, I believe that the um, it can also, you can play lands from it. It's not just cast, I believe. Is it play? Uh... Yes, you may play the Exiled card this turn. So, uh, Malfi, if he finds land, five will be able to uh, get it here. Yeah. I, I, missed... I think it's like a $5 uncommon. Oh, yeah. It's, uh... yeah. There's a... Even for the base version, there's some uh, some fancy versions. Oh, there's like a promo pack or something, too. That's really pretty. Say, is that a Thalia Alter Brainstorm? That looks like a Thalia on the left side of the card to me, but it may not be. It'd be a strange choice for Stoneblade. Does Malfi play uh, Death and Taxes as well? Uh, Malfi does play some kind of version of it um, okay. occasionally. Malfi is more known for uh, robots. Uh, not robots, but... Um, well, post oh, yeah, mud. Podpost slash Mud is what I was thinking of. I was thinking of like the Metal Worker, sorry, in my head. Oh, yeah. That, that was in my head. <laughs> But it didn't come out that way. Uh, oh, Knight of the Reliquary. If uh, Malfi's already burned two swords, and that's a uh, that's a good way to uh, apply some pressure. Here. Also, gets rid of yeah. the wasteland. Like yeah, those wastelands aren't doing much in this matchup. Well, he won't be able to sacrifice them since they're not planes or for or, or not planes yet. or forest. Not yeah. yet. <laughs> oh, does he have the uh, the one Yavamaya tech? Um, I've so. been running that as well. And that is pretty nice. Actually, I don't no, see it on the deck list. One. Oh man, I'm so disappointed. 
Yeah, it would have been uh, so for this league. Modern Horizons Two was legal for the playoffs, but not for the pool play, I believe. Oh, can we talk about the fact that uh, Michael is running a court of grace in the sideboard? Uh, that is actually a common piece of tech I've seen in Four Hollow Limb sideboards, or at least it used to be until it uh, moved out. Um, I guess uh, I Maverick here. <laughs> yeah, this actually reminds me a lot of a uh, a loam deck that takes out Chalice and all the, like the land synergies and just. Gets to lean heavier on Green Sun Zenith. Um, looks like Splashing Blue for Lee of Old. Interesting. So a lot of the... Uh, the anyway, I, I get... <laughs> Better than Oof. all. As they used Man. to say, right? Yeah, getting to counter the Knight of the Reliquary and then land Jace. Ah, uh, Fate Seal. Oh, oh leaves it on top. Draw that useless dried arbor. I don't care. I don't care. It's, it is a creature, yeah. but it doesn't really matter. No. And I love that he's just like ticking up immediately with this Jace. Like he has everything. He's got the board controlled. Um, Just going to rush to that alternate win condition there. Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of people say Jace is not as good as it used to be, but Jace is still good. Fine. It does work. Yep. And I'm going to take a brainstorm here. Look at getting it out of like creature range a little bit. Um, I mean, I. I think on the surface that's true. Like Jace, I don't think is as powerful in Legacy as he used to be, but yeah. like you still never want to see him on the other side of the table. I mean, at his worst, he's an unsummon, but at his best, he's going to start fate sealing and brainstorming forever. Yeah, like I I've cast a couple four mana brainstorms, but um... it looks like we're sequencing uh, and shortening yeah. here because we had a prismatic uh, vista to fetch with. I think we're searching with the second. Oh, okay. I I I yeah. And we're going to cast something. Uh, it's going to be Cauldron. Uh, that synergy with having double Stoneforge <laughs> there stone just forge. meaning you can immediately get whatever you want, and it has haste, uh, so... Eat five. Yeah, there's a lot of crunch happening this turn. You can block it, at least. That's that's relevant. Yeah, I guess uh, he may have drawn the other Stoneforge off the Jace, because if he hadn't, he could have like just bounced Dread Arbor and crunched for infinite <laughs> here. Uh, uh, crunch for eight. Uh, seven, one, seven, four, six. But, um, let's see what happens here. I mean, we are starting for five, so yeah. Michael's at 20, but oh, he has swords. Oh, excellent. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> we are okay, seeing so the germ go away. That was the last card in his hand. And yeah, Melfi has two cards, but we've already seen at least two forces 19 to 20, though. Not bad. We're, we're pretty on equal playing ground. It's just Michael's in a bad position to be in. Yeah. Culture costs, is it seven to equip as well? If he yes, wants to scoot I that over? So. Oh my goodness. That is, is a ton. It is a, a heavy cost. Yeah. Although, uh, you know, I was just saying that and Melfi's literally one land away, it looks like, so. Gives first strike, trample, indestructible haste. Yeah, and the equipment itself being indestructible, I, I don't mm. think that uh, Melfi or that uh, Michael can even answer that in the main deck, can he? Um, no, I don't. He has, so. he has two disenchant effects. Um, actually, hard zero ways on the sideboard too, except for collector roof. Yeah, given the creature indestructible, just, ugh. oh, is this whole breacher yeah. to answer the Sylvan Library? Oh, that is disgusting. Oh my lord. Yeah, that can be kept on top. No one cares. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Whole Breacher is Sylvan, against Sylvan Library. It's just such a funny and clean answer. He's going to point to the Sylvan Library. Hopefully he's not going to choose to activate it. It is a May. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Declines the activation, thankfully. Of course. Um, it is a May trigger. Just, just a reminder, yeah. it is a May trigger. Even though there is one version of Sylvan Library that has pay zero on it. Activates yeah. ability. That's always my favorite one. Yeah, always check the Oracle text. <laughs> I believe it was. Touching on cards from 1994. It's like 6th edition, right? Where it printed with like a 0 or something like that? It, it's uh, the 5th edition one, I believe. Yeah, it's, Sylvan it's, Library. Yeah. It's a white border. It's a white border Sylvan mm -hmm. Library that has 0 pay. <laughs> yeah, it's printed as an uh, activated ability instead of yeah. triggered ability. It is super funny. Yeah. So, let's scoot it over to the Hole Breacher and attack for a ton here. Uh, so, one turn clock for Malfi. I guess the uh, the arbor can block for now. But, uh, I uh, believe that is ooh, a we're that. That is that, that yeah. is going away. 
Yeah, bottom that is, of that, that, is, that is not coming up anytime soon. Yeah, I, playing I, against Fate Sailing, I just always want to like, I always want to know. Oh, that's a horrible draw. Oh, it's signed though. Uh, that doesn't do anything, but yeah, it is signed. It looks nice. Yeah. Does the guy's cradle sign add value to that? Like, is the artist signature no. on that one? I, I don't actually know. No, no, it's it's Mark Zug. I think he's uh, fairly common okay. for signing. Yeah. Uh, also, I don't see a lot of signed cradles, uh, I, but I don't think his signature is particularly rare either. Um, it's not like uh, uh, it's not like uh, pyro, uh, it's not like uh, the fire blast guy for burn or whatever who, who doesn't oh, yeah. sign it. Yeah, or Quentin Hoover or um, Bay Jones or yeah, I know there's some of the old school ones that are uh, very rare. Yeah, a lot of them are rare or more rare. I think Van Klimp, Van Klimp or Susan Van Klimp. Can't sign oh, Susan May Camp. Yeah. yeah. She can't sign anymore, like actually, physically. Um, yeah. You have Rush, who's unfortunately passed away many years ago. Um, and there's a bunch of other artists that are either retired or passed away. Um, so you, oh. you have a lot of options there in terms of like what is really rare. Yeah. Um, I think I mentioned Faye, but I think maybe she does actually sign, but like one card, like there's some weird restriction. Um, Anyway, so Malfi takes that pretty quick in a commanding yep. Cauldre, Cauldre led uh, win there. Uh, we'll check out the sideboards for uh, the players. Let's start with uh, Maverick. Maverick's always a fun one. We're looking at two abrupt decays from what I'm saying, two choke, a collector's oof, a court of grace, four ley lines, two sanctum prelates, a uh, plague engineer, and two thoughtsies. What do you like? Uh, Sanctum Prelate is always a blast for me against any blue deck or deck that really wants to uh, resolve some non-creature spells. Um, Malfi is sort of like on the edge there, and a lot of the stuff that I would hit from him hurts me also, so I may not be excited about it. Uh, Abrupt Decays for some of the equipment, I don't mind at all, or even like the creatures. And then Choke shuts off the islands, um, but Malfi does have a pretty decent mana base with, with uh, basics of other types here. Um, if I can find a room, I still like the pinch. Uh, but I mean, it's not a slam dunk like it is sometimes. What do you think there? Honestly, I'm bringing in Collector Oof. I'm sorry. As much as I, I like to get my equipments off, I like not getting swung in the face with like Caldra Complete or anyone else. Yeah, I was thinking about that as well. It's it, The fact that it's symmetrical is uh, kind of a bummer, but you can also just like green sun for it when it, the situation calls for it. I also want to make sure they don't um, bounce the better school token. That'd be nice. Yeah. Um... So where do you where do you come down on uh, on Prelate in this matchup? Do you want to bring that in or no? Prelate would be nice. Um, Prelate on one is really good in this matchup because it only shuts off your swords. Yeah, uh, one is definitely where I would think. And uh, the for the record, uh, we haven't mentioned it yet. The players do have full deck lists for each other, so they were able to uh, make a plan going into the matchup. Uh, they know all the cards in their deck, and they could reference it during sideboarding here. So uh, no surprises for either player. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think abrupt decay, maybe a choke, and like collectors here. I mean, it just there's not enough to like actually care about ley line. Court of Grace does not seem that great here. Um, Plain engineer seems horrible. I mean, it it just seems like Sanctum Prelate. If you cut like a tracker or something, I don't know. Yeah, you got to keep the uh, the threats in the deck there, but I think some of them they can cut. Um, I guess cutting these the Stoneforge package in general is something that I've seen. Maverick do. I'm not sure if he'll do it in this matchup or not, but that makes the Collector Oof play a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll, uh, we'll see what those players bring in. Do you want to take a look at the uh, Stoneblade list? Yeah, of course. Boy, there's a lot of one-ofs here. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we've got a Containment Priest, a Deafening Silence, Aether Swim Cannonist, a Force Negation, a Magus of the Moon, a Meltdown, a meltdown Spice, uh, one more Prismatic Ending... Uh, to go with the one on the main deck, uh, one Pyroblast, a Red Blast, two Submerge, one Supreme Verdict, two Surgical, and one Wear Tear. I really like Submerge oh. here. Submerge, Submerge is free. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Submerge is great. Um, I don't think Meltdown will come in. Um, Magus might come in, actually. That, that, that's a card I can see potentially coming in. Containment Priest could also come in because we're playing a Green Sun deck. Always mm -hmm. good to see. I don't think Aether Sworn Candidates is coming in. I think maybe in the Prismatic can come in if they want, if uh, Malfi wants to put that in. But I definitely can see the double Submerge because Submerge is such a good card. It's free. You're playing into Green Deck. Yeah. Um. I'm. I'm. If I'm playing Stoneblade here, um, I haven't played Jeskai, but it, playing the decks I played, I'm also tempted by the Supreme Verdict just as like a reset button because 
sometimes in this kind of deck, the way that you lose is just like being threat light while they establish a board presence, mm-hmm. and you just sort of like dirtle. Um, like you have a couple of easy cuts, I think. Like the I guess oh, he already has one supreme version main, so maybe that's a little much. Like the the Darset and the Spell Pierce to me are both uh, easy cuts. Maybe the Force Negation as well. Um, but yeah, you mentioned the Mags of the Moon, and that is that's something that Maverick uh, surprisingly has a tough time playing around, especially this four color version here, because like yeah, they have basics, but also their mana is uh, they're mana hungry, and they need a lot of different types of it. So that one back to basics, and that one. Max of the Moon can do some work. Yeah, that back to base is going to hurt. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm glad to see a uh, a hard three-color here deck running the uh, main deck back to basics. Because uh, it's not even like they're splashing for Blast in the sideboard or anything. You know, he's got two Express Federation, two Lightning Bolt uh, that are all going to attack or need that red mana. It's actually kind of interesting because the red mana sources are only two in the deck entirely. It's a it's a volcanic island and a mountain. <laughs> yeah, That's the, uh, surprising. <laughs> yeah, um, I've splashed in um, Stoneblade as well off of that small of a, a splash, but I didn't have anything. I didn't have all that main board. Yeah, I didn't run double control. lightning bolt main and uh, two expressive iteration. That's a lot of red main. Yeah. Plus, uh, getting the the red for prismatic ending in case you need it. Although, I mean, those red those red spells are very good. For the stack, so <laughs> I'm sure he I'm sure he doesn't uh, mind having access to them. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, I would have the the two lightning bolts there uh, feel especially nice to me. Yeah, I mean, I've always had those moments and um, don't blade where I'm like, man, I really could use just like a bolt. I mean, nice. yeah. I'm like one damage yeah. away. I'd like to bolt or like get a gut shot. I'd like, oh, please. <laughs> Yeah, bolt to the face, or just like bolt to get my uh, get my suited up creature through. Like both of those always feel, or both of those would, would feel really nice. Oh yeah, I am liking prismatic uh, ending though. Prismatic ending is a lot of fun. Yeah, I've had um, a real mixed bag so far versus me. I haven't gotten to cast it myself yet. Um, Great. Right. The fact that like the fact that it's sorcery speed, I know it has to be, or it would be too good. Uh, Can you imagine if it didn't say target though? Can you imagine? If it was just like council's judgment, but yeah. if it was just like will of the council. <laughs> it doesn't say target, it just says pick or name. <laughs> yeah. That's so gross. Yeah, exile named uh target non land permanent with its meta value was uh, less than a just just imagine that line. It doesn't matter that it's sorcery, it's great. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's actually a good point. Uh, no council judgment in other players list here, and I know that's something that Stoneblade at least uh, used to have in the sideboard. Uh, and Maverick, I think I've seen sometimes have uh, have access to it in the sideboard. Yeah, I mean, there's no need for it because you're playing Plague Engineers because the only thing that you're playing, um, the only reason that you're playing a council's judgment uh, in your main board or sideboard is because you're playing against True Name. That was the whole point of it. Um, but Plague Engineer has been around for a while, so I mean that's really the only thing that's getting rid of things. I do think we could see potentially a rise in uh, tra- Trinity Mimesis again, um, especially if you know, especially if that deck comes back because everyone seems to be cutting like any any sort of viability of getting rid of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I Council Judgment is one of those cards that I like more than other people. I think even when it's not like the optimal thing, it's just it's so flexible and like it gets around protection, it gets around indestructibility, like for Cultura. So yeah. like. I just like flexibility, I think. Um, yeah, no, I play one but, on my sideboard. It, it's good. Yeah. Classic Bolt the Bird here. The Jeskai Stoneblade deck is going to lead off on basic Mountain. Um, we're going to assume Alfie has some other lands in hand. Can you imagine having to cast a Prismatic Ending and trying to target a uh, Cauldre complete, but not being able to because you don't have enough colors? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Um, yeah, not even getting to use uh, use wastes there since it makes Hellowless and not color. Exactly. Sad. If only it had domain. I know that's, that 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 one kills me all the time. I'm just like. All right, so flood is trend. Um, Michael got his bolt, bird bolted there. No turn two play for either two or three mana. That's the classic though. Bolt the bird. Ah. Yeah. You gotta it. It feels like such a waste, but also like your bird starts if you're playing a deck like Maverick are so different from your non-bird starts. 
You don't you don't want those red start. Too scary. Yeah. Interestingly yeah. though, we do have another high arc um for Modern Horizons 2. We have Ignoble. What are your thoughts on that? I'm curious. Um, I am super into it. I bought a playset of foil retros. Um, I'm gonna jam it somewhere. Um, I wish it were like Grixis color almost, because like the fact that Noble taps for blue is so great, and of course like Noble in Maverick is great because it yeah. makes the colors you care about. Um, yeah. It's been unfortunate that that you know we haven't had the same mana fixing that it's been like uh, asymmetrical for so long. Um, so we'll see like what it replaces. I, I think a lot of decks have sort of been like built around the Bant side of the pie, uh, so to yeah. speak, just because Noble Hierarch exists. Um, I, I do want to see it in like, I don't know, maybe Modern John or like Legacy In fact, I, I want to see if the Exalted triggers actually matter that much. Yeah. Um, I, I, whenever I retool my Jund deck, um, I, I plan to put it in there for, for Legacy. I haven't played Modern Jund, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it there either. I just, I just really want to um, play it in fact. That's what I want to do. Yeah. I don't think that the... Um, I don't think that the Exalted matters as much as the fixing. Like, of course, those decks would always play Birds of Paradise, but, yeah. like, at least Noble can attack for one. Um, so, having, like, the, the difference between having two men on turn two and three men on turn two feels just so crazy, as well as the fixing feels nice. So, we'll, we'll see if it sticks, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's also just nice to have, like, more... Uh more bird-like targets at, at the one-drop yeah. slot. I mean, you're only running, like, eight creatures that actually matter. Yeah, I mean, in Jund right now, my only one-drops are, like, Thoughtseize and um, one M Miri's Guile, and I think everything else is, yeah. um, like, it's very clogged at two and three. Ooh, we're going to see a Leovold. Yeah. yeah, so speaking of ramping on turn two, that Leovold could have come down last turn. Um, we're going to see... Expressive iteration, which does randomly get around the drawing cards clause. Yeah, you know, you just put them in your hand. Put yeah. one to hand, put one on the exile them, another on the bottom. We're not drawing cards, we're just looking at cards. Yeah, but getting the Leavold out against the uh, cantrip deck must feel pretty nice. You know what also gets around Leavold, but in like a funny manner? Um, you play a uh, portent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, found it. Oh, put that. Bye, okay. there's Submerge. Draw your card. Yep. So, I mean, like, not the worst trade for, for Demi here, uh, but that means Malfi can just counter it on the way back down. Oh, yeah. Great. If he has it. Um, it's, a, it's a nice tempo. Or just there. not oh. need to. You know, just keep drawing your cards when I Caracas it. It's fine. I believe that's a I, Italian Caracas based on the colors. I think English? I'm not entirely... Yeah, it, it's that's not sort of, like, in between. It's not washed out enough, in my opinion. English see, it doesn't is seem, usually washed out. Yeah, it doesn't seem dark enough to be Italian to my eye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love how we're just judging like colors like, yeah, it's, it's not washed out enough. It doesn't look like dried out English legends. <laughs> yeah, you know, I actually, I, I, I don't mind it. Yeah. It's, I, I think that I, w I would prefer it to be the other way around, but if it's not, then it's not, so. No, I, I actually like Italian Legends a lot. I, I love Italian Underworld Dreams, because the colors pop so well. Uh, Italian Tabernacle looks really nice. <laughs> so, let me see if I can, there's, oh, Glare, that, that's English. Okay. I could, I think we're both, yeah, I still have the same opinion. It still just doesn't seem dark enough for Italian to me, yeah. but it also isn't light enough for English. <sighs> yeah, for those Nothing. who aren't for those who aren't familiar with the English versus Italian uh, legends printing, um, legends printing English is like really washed out, faded colors due to the printing error that happened. But then Italian <laughs> decided for whatever reason they printed more Italian legends than uh, English legends. Um, but in the Italian printing, they printed the colors like really heavy. Um, so the Italian printing of uh, Caracas is very very prevalent in terms of color. Yeah, and that's, um, so like, yeah, early Magic, they were just like printing two capacity every set, and every set they printed, they had more money, and they could print more cards in a batch, and so since Italian Legends was printed after Legends, that's the story I've heard, is that's why there's more Italian Legends than English. Same with Renaissance versus Antiquities. Mm. Yeah, the reprint sets, by then they had the money to uh, really make big batches. Oh yeah, and we thank them for it. Yeah. Oh, we're going to see a Tyler's Tracker Guy's Cradle Clue Token time. 
Yeah. I mean, this is this is a great place to be here. Just, like, get something going. Because Malfi's stumbled for a little bit. He's just sort of, like, turning his wheels. Oh, yeah. Uh, immediate worse. swords, though. Yeah, good, goodbye. I mean, at least you get a clue talking. Yeah, it replaced itself. Like, these plays aren't that hurtful for Domik because he drew a card off the Lee of Old. He drew a card off of the Lee of, off the um, Tracker, or, oh. like, Will eventually. Did Lee of Old get countered? I must have missed that. Uh, yeah, I think it got countered on the way back down. Oh, GSZ, yeah, that's going away. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye. That, that can never resolve. Nope. Um, man, Malfi aggressively going for the plus here. But, I mean, I guess you don't need... There's nothing to unsummon, and if your hand is okay, then... Like, he, he can't, like... He can't convert a Brainstorm very effectively on this turn since he doesn't have the mana to play yeah. spells he finds. Uh, he also only has one card in hand. So, like, it all makes sense. It just, uh... Yeah, me, let me one mana find a brainstorm or something, and I'm just like, uh, well, I don't want to cast it. Yeah. Um, I think that's that a I... Bad I bad idea. Yeah. I can be a little greedy and just go for the, uh, the immediate brainstorm on there. But th this play makes a lot more sense. I mean, imagine if you did the immediate brainstorm and just get screwed by GSC. That, that wouldn't have been fun. No, that would not have been fun. That's why uh that's why Melfi is uh in the top eight right now and I'm commentating. <laughs> uh oh Hex uh has the m no, he's one short of getting it up to a four four, but he just plays Sword of Fire and Ice anyway. It's that's level four fair. for Hex Uh I think it's three. I think you need to pump it three times. Oh you're right. Yeah, so he could that only give, it in. That only gives you protection from instance and sorcery, so you could still get on summons. Oh, that's, yeah, that's absolutely true. I was thinking, uh, protect yourself from swords and from prismatic ending, but yeah, definitely just would get bounced. Yeah, let's, so. let's not get on. <laughs> okay, if you insist. Not a good idea. And I think that's the one hex drinker, too. Right? Uh, yeah, there's just one. Now, Teague would have been nice to have. Got a Teague. That way, you know, no, no shenanigans of casting Jace's. Not on my block. Yep. Unfortunately, a little, little too late here, but... Oh, yeah. Um, if... Man, if Domi can land a creature... I guess he has the mana next turn to replay Hex Drinker and then suit it up to protect from Jace. Um, that'd be a good place to be. I mean, that's assuming. We get passed back here, but we always know, like, the minute the thing equips is the minute it gets sorted. Yeah. Um, so I guess we, Malfi can test that by, um, or sorry, Dem Demi could, could test that by <laughs> adding up, leveling the it up. Yeah. But then he's one mana short and Lance has a land. Yeah. He can't have both this turn without a land. Oh yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. Or an ornithopter, but he doesn't run those. So we're going to equip first. I imagine. Yeah. Yeah. If I had managed to do both, I think I'd I would tempt fate by uh, oh, hundred percent attempt fate. You, you joking? Yeah. So, gonna hold on here. Uh, Malfi's not snap swordsing it, so. Oh well, never mind. Bar. Uh oh. Can we bounce a sword here. It's more expensive to get back down. That's nice. Oh, that's yeah. We did a petty theft. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he has the mana, but maybe not the... I can't tell if he has the colors to cast that at end of turn. Uh, he's got a blue, a white, and a white. Okay, so he can crack the strand and do it if he wants? Yes, I believe so. Okay. This is not a good position to be in here. I would imagine you want to crack the clue here. Maybe hit Jace for one. Yeah, I mean, unless you have something useful in your hand, then yeah, absolutely, like, draw that card. Because with the land, you would love to hit it for this turn. Um, Crack the clue, hit the Jace, force uh, Stoneblade to cast its spell, I'd imagine. Yeah, dealing one damage to Jace doesn't do anything, but dealing one damage to face doesn't do anything either, so... Yeah, I mean, it feels better. I feel like hit the hit Jace. Jace. Yeah. It feels better just to hit Jace here. Yeah. I... Are we getting Snapcaster? Oh, God. Uh, that'd be tragic. Is it, if this is Snapcaster Swords, then I feel like it's just game. No, 
All right. I forget Hex Drinker is also casually a 2 1 because the vanilla test isn't good enough anymore. It yeah, doesn't no. be a 2 1. I thought okay. it was a 1 1. I'm not going nope, to lie. I thought it was a 1 1. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm pretty sure every time I battle it, I get it wrong. I mean, it just makes sense in your head that you're leveling up a 1 1, right? Yeah, and it levels up, like, it levels it to a 4 4 and a 6 6, right? Like, it's just always yeah. square except for when you cast it. Yeah, you level it up uh, three times. And it becomes a 4-4 with protection from instance. And then you level it up uh, eight times or more, you get protection from everything and it becomes a 6-6. Yeah, if that thing ever hits eight, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. I have i don't know if I've ever beat it. I don't think you really can. Uh, you gotta... You gotta race around it. You gotta, what, destroy all creatures or like a board wipe or yeah. exile with uh, Council of Judgment. I was just about to say, you know what Council Judgment can beat? Uh, you, you know what but. Council Judgment uh, can beat? Anything. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 best, the best legacy card there is, even though it's really hard to cast. It just says, no. Name a card, Ooh. we both name that card, you choose to name another card, I get that as well too. <laughs> and it doesn't target, so that's always nice. Malfi is definitely in a commanding position here. We're going to get a GTA and probably snap equip it. Oh yeah, you can cast and suit and attack. Yeah, just cast it, hard cast it, go for it, suit yeah. it up, put it on the body, kill, swing. Kill the Hex Drinker. Kill Hex Drinker. He even yeah. tried to swing with the GTA there, it looked like, instead of the uh, creature, which is very funny. Uh, we know which part of that is important. Hey, GTA is a creature in its mind. It's the greatest planeswalker that ever existed. Yeah, I mean, Malfi's deck here is just sort of like a who's who of some of like the most broken cards we've seen before. In uh, in standard at least, like GTA and Jace, I think both uh, banned in standard at various points. I mean, GTA, Jace, and Legacy, or, or sorry, in modern. Stone yeah, Forge. all these cards have been. <laughs> yeah, these are all like the greatest hits of like cards that probably have been banned or almost banned. Yeah, like we're, we're playing a Caracas, which is banned in like all sort of other formats. Uh, we're playing a Stoneforge, which was banned in modern in the beginning, same with Jace, and then it was banned at the end of standard, um, when it was still around. Um, same with Stoneforge. Raisin Bar, I think, got a standard ban? I don't even remember. Because well, Drain has like a crap ton of so. bans. I just don't yeah, remember what it, it is. It did. I don't think Raisin Bar got banned, but I know there were a ton of cards from that set that did. Yeah, because Once Upon a Time got banned. Um, Oakley got banned. Uh, uh, is Fires of Invention from that set as well? I don't remember. No, that was from Kaladesh. Okay. Or one of the, it, was either, it was from one of the Kaladesh sets. I don't remember which... There were two calendar sets, right? They hadn't gone to the single by then? I don't remember. It's Aether Revolt and Kaladesh, right? Aether Revolt, there we go. I was thinking Amonkhet and uh, Hour of Devastation, but you're right. Uh, welcome to the Legacy podcast, or, or the Legacy uh, stream, where we talk about standard sets and reminisce about how much we forgot about standard. <laughs> yeah, no. Sorry, y'all, our memory's bad. But yeah. we, just, we just went on the greatest hits of Stoneblade being, you know, one of the best standard uh, decks ever. A lot of fun. Um, I think the yeah. only deck that technically beats it is Standard Affinity, uh, when you had Skullclamp legal standard for that very Oof. little time. Oof. I think that was actually the most busted standard set that you actually, standard deck that you could actually ever play. Yeah. Uh, Randy Bueller did a, like, uh, best of standard, either top 8 or top 16, and, like, battle all these historical standard decks against each other. Uh, some of them were not as good, like, uh, Necro lost, oh God. surprisingly, to something, like, Cobblade or something. Yeah. Cobblade, it was uh, really good, though. It, Let's be let's not be like kidding around. Yeah, I'm mostly sad that I've never got to play Dragonstorm because after I saw that deck, I was in love. That that deck is real funny. goofy. That deck is funny. Yeah, um, uh, welcome guys. Yeah, we're just talking about crazy decks from standards past. Uh, I mean, put that is, on bottom. This is, Sorry, this is pretty yeah. easy. Um, I mean, it, it's the same. It's the same match we just saw like two seconds ago. Uh, we're just gonna put all the GSEs on the bottom and keep all the lands on top. Uh, and we're going to beat face with some kind of threat, and we have a Stone Forge out. Uh, we yeah. don't, we don't was, have uh, equipment anymore, but don't worry, we can find another one. Yeah. Uh, I was laughing with Dameek, not uh, not uh, not uh, at him earlier. Uh, oh, it has a Swords, probably for the Brazen Borrower here. Since I would the imagine the Brazen Borrower. I mean, theoretically, you uh, could get rid of the... Theoretically, you could get rid of the Stone Forge. Yeah, oh, to yeah, protect yeah, from yeah, future that, equipment. That's a Pierce. Yeah. That is a Pierce. Oh. 
That is a spell, Pierce. Well, I was laughing uh, because we saw the Dryad Arbor get revealed from the Jace for a second game in a row, which is a card Malfi is ecstatic to leave on top. No, that taps for uh, zero. It's very nice. Great card. Yeah, yeah but the, the, the old summoning sick land, uh, not seeing a lot of respect oh. <laughs> as a top tick. No. A 1-1 one, one that can't tap, whatever. Yeah. Seems fine. Uh, Oh, we're gonna put a Thalia. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's gonna oh, yeah. bounce. <laughs> gonna well, if bounce. he suits it up, if he suits it up, then he won't be able to bounce it. Uh, oh yeah, four <laughs> swords, all of the eats, above. Each bounce. All right, had all these. Yeah, I missed the Karakas. That's same with the uh, the Jace. Um, I'm, I'm actually really how many surprised. swords is that? I think that's all that four. Feels like... Okay, I know that's at least three. Um... Yeah, Malfi has, uh, I would say Malfi has drawn exceptionally well this game, but also, like, the deck is full of cantrips to be able to have these draws, so. That's very true. Um, I mean, we are just seeing so, the face of the flyer. So. Yeah. Oh, that's just, a knight of reliquary. No, 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 yep. no, no. Is, bottom, that, really, bottom, is bottom. that really staying on top? No way. No way. Oh. No way. We have uh, a fetch out. Why is that staying on top? Well, you know, I guess it, it'll be Oh, sick. no! Oh, <laughs> wow. Um, it, I, it'll be my, sick. Michael, and it'll be Michael must be Michael must be assuming that it's bad and not a coder left on top. Feels bad. Well, I think it doesn't actually dig him out of the situation at all because it'll be sick for a turn. He can't activate it. Um, then Malfi can bounce it, swing for four, and it's a one turn clock again. He can just make the same play again the following turn. I mean, it's a three drop, and you can pay for uh, equipping the swords. Can't be bounced. It's not a. It's not a legend. Oh. That's okay. That's fair. He has the mana to to do both. Yeah, it's not like um, and it's a big creature too. Yeah, maybe it's just too slow in general with the brazen bar coming over the top. I mean, I, I just assume that Michael plays oh, the yeah. card. That's that's my assumption. Yeah. Michael just thought it was. Oh card. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah if, if 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 I just fetch that clear top of my deck, I, I'm going to roll my eyes when I see the Nether Relic. Where I was just trying to think about why Malfi would leave it on top. Oh, that's why. Oh, because he doesn't care. <laughs> he had all these. Uh, so Vendillion click for Malfi, point at Dameek. Let's see that hand, but this is seven damage. Right, well, uh, how good is your hand? I see a Choke, a Court of Grace, and a Ramming Up Excavator. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'm going to take any of these. Like, if you take the the Choke, it's too late for the Choke. You don't care. Court of Grace, it's too late for Court of Grace. You don't care. Yep. Excavator blocks Mystic for a turn. Um, and means it's not lethal. I mean, you can. Fun. No, we tried our got exiled, didn't it? Right. Uh, it's just I don't remember if it got exiled or if it's in the graveyard. Uh, I think it got exiled. I don't see it in the graveyard. I mean, you can play ramming up excavator here, um, and then equip sword because mm -hmm. you can play a land from your grave. I mean, that that is relevant. Yeah, but then you just swing over with the two flyers, and you're at one. I don't... Yeah, you're at one. I mean, I didn't say it was good. I just oh, said, yeah, yeah. I just I mean, said it was relevant. <laughs> yeah, I think he, he's going to have to make all the plays you're talking about here to just, like, stay relevant. Um, yeah. There you go. We'll see, we'll see the suit. <laughs> oh, my God, has the bolt in response. I actually would have just bolted... Oh, he did just bolt face. That's okay, first. never mind. That's first. Yeah. Okay, so... Swing with these. Yeah, swing with these on my turn. I don't even care about untapping here. I'm just going to beat you. Yeah, I didn't untap. Uh, I keep old draw. That's the game. All oh, right. So, uh, Malfi will advance uh, to fight the winner of Masa and Logan's match. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, it'll be Death in Texas or Monkey Sneak, Monkey sneak. Uh, in the semifinals here. Um, so, come and join us, everyone. Uh, link is in the Discord, or link is in the video description below if you want to check out the deck list. You want to link to our Discord or our Twitter or our Twitch. Uh, it's all downstairs. Uh, you can come join us. Uh, we do these leagues once a month, and signups will go through the first. Uh, we, we draw the pools on the first Tuesday of each month, so make sure you're in by the Monday for, you know, for safety. Uh, but we'd love to have all you all there. Once again, my name is Mr. Jack Dex, and I had Cadillac Bear with me tonight. It has been a pleasure. Good luck, have fun. Hope to see you guys in our meta. We'll see you all next time.